yeah, we uh, we hadn't really had a chance to react to this, uh, but we did the first one, and uh, some very interesting theories on how to beat on how to beat the uh, how to beat the saw traps in Saw One. Uh, Saw 1 has some of the more basic traps. And Saw 2 is where you really start to see next level, like, some next level stuff with, um, with the Saw traps. Specifically the, um, uh, specifically, well, there's some that are basic. You know, the pit. You know the one I'm talking about. But then there's others that are a little more complicated that, you know require a little bit more thought there are two traps in saw 2 that actually had really obvious solutions that the people didn't see because they were panicking yeah well the one the one i can think of is the uh the hands through that's the that razor one... box has a visible lock with a key stuck in it on the opposite side that since she's so like dazed by the time she wanders in the room she doesn't even look before she sticks her hands in the box yeah uh and then the uh the uh f- f- uh shoot what's it called the oven basically yeah like it literally has a valve inside of it that he could have turned to turn the gas off Mm-hmm. But he was panicking and moved to the wrong side of the oven, so he didn't manage to get the gas turned off before it was too late. He got burned alive. Well, that's just the way it goes, man. Some people, some people get it, and some people just don't. I mean, unfortunately, there's just people out there who just like I couldn't be bothered to even think. And also, well, also to be so. in a panicky, panicky state, you know. I can't, I can, like, if I was in, like, a rush to try and solve something, I would probably panic and, like, make rash decisions, too. But you were, you were saying? So, uh, the, um, antidote to the uh, nerve agent is never actually show whether or not it would actually work, either. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if there's an actual nerve agent like that. That would make you like bleed out of your mouth, like when you cough up blood and stuff. That just taking an injection would give you immunity to while you're stuck in the building, still breathing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could. I didn't but... even check out the science behind that, but it, I, I question it for sure. <laughs> I would too. But all right, we got the we got how to beat every trap and saw to queued up here. Let's check it out and let's see what's up. Here we go. Hey guys, in a previous video we looked at how to survive all of the traps in the first Saw movie. Today we'll break down Saw 2 and reveal how you can do the same for this one. Even though it's my favorite in the Saw franchise, the traps are probably the easiest to beat, with one method being so simple that you could solve the entire main conflict in about 5 minutes. The movie takes place shortly after the first one, but it's not mentioned how long. A man named Mike wakes up alone in a room and finds a mask filled with nails strapped around his uh, neck. Yeah, the After Iron screaming Maiden. for help, the TV turns on. So this one I have the a theory about. Oh yeah? Because uh, I think I told you this after we finished recording the previous video. I can't remember if it was on our recording or not. But I d- I'm wondering how strong the closing force is on that. And if you couldn't save yourself from being killed, you'd probably be injured. But if you couldn't take your arms and go like this and like this, and basically like uh, whenever it closes, it would possibly break your arms and smash your arms into your face. But as long as you can get to where you can still breathe, you could potentially have time to get medical help. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you did this right here... Yeah, you basically like take your elbow over the top of the front and then this elbow over the top of the back part. Yeah. So that you basically put your arms in the way of it closing on your face. Yeah. Your head. You'd be uncomfortable, but you'd probably live. Yeah, you might be injured, but it might keep it from closing enough to actually kill you. Mm-hmm. God. Hello, Michael. I want to play a game. He's here because, as a police informant, Mike spends his entire time spying on other people. So Jigsaw is going to see if he's willing to give up one of the things he relies most on. The test is that he's given a scalpel and needs to cut into one of his eyes, behind which is the key that unlocks the mask. 
and if he can't beat the game within one minute, the mask will snap shut and the many nails inside will kill him. What's important about the mask is that, much like the reverse bear trap in the first movie, it has a mechanical trigger that starts the timer. If the trigger is never pulled or even removed, the timer doesn't begin and you would have an unlimited amount of time to free yourself. In the previous movie, the characters didn't notice this because the trigger was behind them so they didn't see it, but Mike is actually looking and even touching the trigger, meaning that the first way to beat the trap is to not pull this wire. But in his yep. state of panic, he does. See, right there, that was his own damn fault. Yeah, it's just a freaking smooth brain move. Yeah. It's like, walk over to the wall, look at it, see if you can detach the trigger from the wall. Okay. Yeah, see if uh, see if there's a way for you to pull the weight loose, you know, that's, like, in the little mechanism, and just, like, pull that. Next thing you know, boom, you're loose. He takes the scalpel and tries to cut his eye, but can't bring himself to do it. However, even after pulling the trigger, there's another way to survive. Now, the trap doesn't work if something is blocking the mask from folding together. If the mask doesn't close, the nails can't harm him, and there are two things he could try. First are the big pipes by the wall. The gap in between them is big enough for him to fit his head through the space sideways, with the mask staying outside. That way, when the timer yeah. hits zero, the pipes would stop the mask from closing. But there's an even better solution. He can try the same thing with the big cinder block in the corner. If he simply places it on top of his head, the long heavy stone would also stop the mask from shutting. And since the nails are so deep in the mask, he would probably survive. Anyways, Mike continues to struggle with the test, but eventually the time runs out. And, well, you know. After that, we're introduced to one of our main characters, Detective Eric Matthews. He's part of the team that's investigating the Jigsaw murders. One day, they find a warehouse that the killer might be using, and in a police raid, they find John Kramer calmly sitting there looking like he was already expecting them. With him, they find a bunch of computers that appear to be showing a live feed of a different house. In it, there are seven people, one of whom is Eric's son. They ask him what this is, and he tells them that there's a toxic gas in the house that will kill them within two hours. When Eric asks where he took his son, John only tells him, He's in a safe place. <laughs> a little, little playful uh, wording like that. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. We cut to the guys waking up in the house and none of them seem to know what's going on. They're all locked in a room with a security camera and a big safe. Among the seven people we see Amanda, who we already saw in the first movie, but she appears to be back in another trap. Since she's the only one that has done this before, she starts looking around the room for clues. She finds a tape hidden in the wall which informs them about the toxic gas. Right now, you are breathing in a deadly nerve agent. You've been breathing it since you arrived here. It reveals that there are antidotes that can save them, but they're hidden in the house. The only rule is that they need to survive for three hours, after which the exit to the house opens up. With the tape, they find a key and a note that reads, don't use this on the door. But two of the guys try it anyway. While one of them turns the key, the other one, who looks through the peephole, gets shot in the face by a gun on the other side. This was pretty easy to beat since Addison, one of the people in the room, already looked through the peephole right here. She could warn them that they're looking down a long barrel which could be... Well, she wouldn't know that. Yeah, it just looks dark. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it... it uh, let's see, where the gun is placed... Gun on the other side. One of them turns the key. The other one, who looks through the peephole, gets... I was going to just say, you could potentially see, like, the grooving of the barrel. You know, like, the rifling inside of the barrel. But odds are you're not going to... You're not... She's not going to know what she's looking at. Yeah. And she's just going to be like, it's dark on the other side. I don't think there's anything over there. Either that or she'll be like, or the lights are out, I'm not sure. But, yeah, this right here, the first rule, do not use this on the door. That's a basic rule right there. <clears throat> what do these geniuses do? Use it on the door. Shot in the face by a gun on the other side. This was pretty easy to beat since I mean, Addison. W looking through the peephole while someone is going to unlock the door also just seems like a stupid idea. That's another like, thing too. Why is it? Why are you looking through the people while he's unlocking the door? Like, if anything, if anything, I'd be like, everyone get clear of the door. Like, yeah, everyone, everyone like, stand back from the door and then unlock it. Like, you know, that, like that from like over here. You know, like, you know, like the door, like right there. And then all of a sudden, boom! Like it blows a hole through. It's like, 
Wow, I'm glad no one was looking through the people. Yeah. <laughs> one of the people in the room already looked through the people right here. She could warn them that they're looking down a long barrel which could be dangerous. Or they could have simply done what is written on the note. Either way, I'm pretty sure this trap was meant to be beaten since the gun was put right where you look. If John really wanted to kill someone here, he could have hidden the gun where they couldn't have seen it. Eventually, the door to their room opens automatically. They carefully go through it and find themselves in an old house where almost every room is locked. Jonas says that instead of splitting up and aimlessly walking around the house, they should stick together and work as a team. But they decide to follow the buff guy, Xavier, who is kind of an idiot. They walk downstairs and find a big door marked exit. This is the door that will unlock and open after 3 hours. Xavier tries to beat down the door with a bat he found, however the outside is reinforced with steel planks. And here there's another way to beat the whole test. In between the planks are small gaps which I believe go to the outside, so they could beat down the whole door and let some of the outside air get in. Then they could all stand by the door and breathe in the clean air that comes through the small spaces rather than the toxic gases that are in the house. I'm not the gas sure that that would work. No. But if they could find something like a straw or, you know, thin tubing somewhere in the house, they could slide it between the cracks and breathe through those. Potentially, yes. Like, but at the same time, it's just like it, that's contingent upon if that's in the house somewhere. It would still harm them, but they stretch out the time it takes for the gas to kill them because they're breathing a lot less of it. They only need to do this for 3 hours, after which the door opens. Instead, what they do is split up and search for things in the house. Laura then finds the entrance to the next room. The door leads them into the basement where they find a tape for Obi. What the fuck is Obi? They all should have immediately made uh, makeshift gas masks. Yeah. Um, because you can do that by uh, wrapping cloth around your face. Like, they all have clothing enough to make makeshift gas masks. Yeah, but honestly, with with you know big homie here leading the charge, you know, I, Frankie G. From what a lot of people have said in real life, he's actually a fairly nice guy. Uh, let me actually see, like Frankie G. Yeah, there he is, Frank Gonzalez. And from what people say, he's actually a fairly decent guy in real life, and he. He hates being typecasted as like as like big muscle bound douchebags, but because of his look, I mean, you know, he fits the role very well. Yeah. It's my name. And this room is his test. The tape explains that he must climb inside a furnace where he will find two of the antidotes. He goes inside and grabs one of the syringes, however the second one is stuck on the chain. As he pulls it down, he gets locked inside and a fire starts burning. It quickly comes closer and closer to him, so he sticks to the corner. So another thing I noticed about this whole deal is uh, back up to where the chain's hanging with the syringe right there that it just showed. That's where you will... Yeah. So, uh, similar to um, the box, like, it would be possible to inject yourself with this without pulling it down. Like, all you have to do is move your arm up to it, like get the needle in your arm and then you can push the top down as you move your arm closer you know yeah and but you never have to actually pull those out of there like, find two of the yeah basically what i'm telling everybody in this scenario is if there if you find like something that is like that if you find something that requires you to like pull on it or anything that requires any kind of like physical resistance or anything like that don't do it because that is nine times out of ten going to be a trap that is going to trigger and thus make your life a million times worse. Yep. But yeah. Either way, yeah. So he could have crawled in there, injected himself with one of them, and then pulled the other one down. Out. Well, no, it just crawl back out, and well, then let someone else crawl in and inject themselves with it. Someone who could fit in there. But that's the thing; so. he was able to pull one of them down. Yeah, he was, but then he pulled on the other one. Yeah, but I think it's this one up here that... Mm -hmm. But I would have pulled the one down, and then I would have like felt the resistance on the other one and been like, that one's not moving. I'm going to, like, I've got an idea. Okay, we're good. Here's one for someone else. And then I guarantee Having you, Frankie... Having someone would... else put something in the way of the door, too. 
like the baseball bat or metal pipe, you know? Mm -hmm. Something that would make sure that the door couldn't slam close while he's in there. It would have been smart. Yeah, that's true. The antidotes. He goes inside and grabs one of the syringes, however the second one is stuck on the chain. As he pulls it down, he gets locked inside and a fire starts burning. It quickly comes closer and closer to him, so he sticks to the corner. When he looks through the flames, we see a valve at the other end of the furnace. On it, there's a picture of the devil that says, Twist. A lot of people think that John simply sent Abby in here to die, but twisting it would most likely turn off the gas. Yeah. Not only did the tape mm -hmm. mention this... Remember, Abby. Once you are in hell, only the devil can help you out. But John usually sends his victims through the test to see if they can survive. This leads me to believe that Abby's real test is to see if he would reach through the flames and burn himself to turn off the fire, yeah. or if he would sit in the corner and do nothing. But the easiest way to escape from the inside would be for Abby to turn around and actually look at the door he was kicking, because then <coughs> he realized that he only has to turn this little notch and it would unlock the door. The way that yeah, it's true, because it's yeah. basically a simple, like, like uh, I forget what they call it, like a pop latch, I think. Basically, you would just turn that up, push it, and then you'd be good. This trap was set up was pretty simple. He pulled the chain and a small wire flipped the stud. So flip it back over. But I think there's a secret way to stop the fire, because before Abby climbed into the trap, he played with a valve on the outside of the furnace. However, he yanked the grip off and threw it away for some reason. For the games you've played with others. By playing one of mine. I think that if you were to turn that valve, that it would shut off the gas. I mean, filmmakers rarely insert random moments into a movie that exists for no reason, so I think they wanted us to notice him playing with a knob. And it makes sense that a big yeah, furnace can be controlled from the outside. Over that nobody could turn it off. Yeah. While he's in there. Yeah. Actually, that's something they could have added for the tension. Be like, like, the valve, the valve, I threw away. Find it. Yeah, you know, just like like they break the glass on the other side, and he's like 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 he's able to like get like his like his arm through there or something, and he's like able to tell them, like like the valve, the valve, find it, it's on the ground, I threw it away. By See, the time they break the glass, though, he's already pretty much fucked. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just trying to think of ways to add to the tension, and like also like you know just. Like, he could, like, the kid could be very empathetic towards him. Like, like, he breaks his arm through, and the kid's, like, holding his, like, like holding his hand and be like, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get you out of there. And then, and then he very slowly, like, dies, and the kid, the kid's more traumatized because of that. There are ways that, like, it, as much as I love these films, as much as I love, like, the, like, these films as a whole, I think a little bit more... Tying into the empathy of like the people who are dying will re can really like wrench up like the like what you're feeling during the film, mm. and unfortunately, by the time like uh, this one does does it, but it doesn't do it as much as it could. But in the later films, that's almost all completely gone, and instead it's just like, how, what's the most creative, most gory, most like disgustingly like obscene way that we can kill somebody instead of it being about like literally these people are dying these people are like like their lives are ending and there needs to be weight to that there needs to be gravitas to that but there isn't Ooh. by the time we get to the later films yeah it anyway. definitely could be better directed if not better written yeah like, but yeah it is what it is <clears throat> Unfortunately, none of the other guys notice this. After pulling on the locked door, they go to the other side of the furnace and find a small glass window. When Xavier breaks it, Abby reaches out with one arm, but doesn't fit through. They try to open the door to the furnace, but it's too hot. This adds a new way to get out. They can take their clothing and wrap it around the handle, which is what they tried with the other door. Use your coat! Use your coat! Even though this seems a little too easy for Jigsaw, I'd still try it. But I do have to say one thing. All of these guys kind of act like idiots. First of all, they should check out the furnace before going inside of it. They already saw mm -hmm. that the entire house is set up with traps that look like something out of Home Alone. Yes. Like, you're in a jigsaw trap house, dude. You're literally in one of the worst like case scenario situations you could ever think of. You need to have like you need to have some wherewithal to actually like use your brain for more than 3 seconds. 
I think they're all panicking and rushing because they feel like they're on a timer to die, you know? I know, but three hours. Like, what would have stopped them from taking a couple of minutes to look over the furnace a little bit more on the inside and been like, oh, hey, this chain's connected to the door latch. It was dark inside of it, too, when they showed it, so... I guess, yeah. I feel like they could have uh, found some way to light it up, maybe, if they had tried. Maybe. But, anyway... And I mean, come on, a giant furnace? That seems like an obvious trap. So instead of wandering around the room doing nothing like these guys, they should watch them more carefully. That way they might have even stopped the door from closing and locking him in there. Mm -hmm. After Eric gets nowhere with John and time continues running out, our protagonists slowly start feeling the gas's toxic and poisonous effects. <coughs> Jonas shows up and reveals that another room has opened. They go upstairs, but the unlocked door appears to be stuck on something. By now they should know that this is probably for a reason, however Xavier decides to force the door open. They enter the room and check everything out. In it they Oh, this one. <laughs> this one. Oh. See a big really door bothered me whenever this movie first came out. It doesn't so much anymore, though. The four minute timer that started ticking away after they came in. Eventually, they find another tape which reveals that this room is Xavier's test. Since he is a drug dealer, he needs to jump into a pit of used needles and find the key to the door, behind which is an antidote. Oh. So, yeah, I don't like this one because I feel like this one is sort of a death sentence. It's like, if those needles have all been used by God knows who, like, you're pretty much guaranteed to get HIV, like... HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, like hepatitis. All kinds of stuff. You're you're going to get a bloodborne illness. You're basically going to get all of the bloodborne illnesses, pretty much. Yeah. Unless you're extremely, extremely, extremely lucky. Oh. It will be like finding a needle in a haystack. <laughs> but Xavier doesn't really feel like jumping in, and since he's the most powerful one in the group, he throws in Amanda and forces her to look for the key. God damn. It still bugs me. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, it's been 18 years since this film. This part still bugs me. <laughs> it, it gets me, dude. I somehow, like, managed to like, desensitize myself well, to it. I've had blood drawn and everything. I've had needles, like, in my arm and everything. <clears throat> so that stuff doesn't bother me anymore. But just the fact that, like... It, this would be like if I'm on the Jersey Shore and I'm run, and I'm like I fall down on the beach like saying you know like like and it's like all of a sudden like I kind of like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's mainly the disease aspect that's horrifying about it I guess yeah that's that's one for me also uh oh she slowly picks through the needles but as time runs out and adrenaline kicks in. She fights herself through the pit. With less than 10 seconds on the clock, she finds the key and gives it to Xavier. He takes it, puts it in the lock, but misses it in the last possible second. All this guy had to do was put a key in a hole, and he still failed. Hmm. Much like the first, the first death in the film. He put a key in the hole, and he still somehow failed. In order to beat this, they would seriously need to stop wasting time. They go in there and do nothing for a solid 20 seconds, and they waste half their time before they even get to the test. Any second saved here and they would have beaten it. Once Amanda was thrown in the pit, they could have given her clothes or these blankets to wrap herself. That's true. Although that wouldn't stop all the needles from jabbing in there, but yeah, it would do a lot though. That might have been the whole reason those are there. Yeah. It's like there's always like some trick to the traps in some way, and I could never figure out exactly what the trick to this one would have been. The only thing I could think of was like not like jamming the door open and starting the timer in the first place could help. Yeah. But like there doesn't seem to really be a trick to actually finding the key with <coughs> kind of ease, you know? No, this is one that I definitely think is one of the more cruel ones. Yeah. But needless to say, yeah, I mean. I would say, I would, uh, I mean, shoes. You, I would pick the, like, whoever has shoes on. Yeah, like, 
uh, his uh, vans, like if you just scoop the needles, like with just the bottoms of the vans. Yeah, basically uh, what you could do is you could get these blankets. For, for one thing, she doesn't have shoes at all. Like, no. You know, shoes before you go in there so that you can actually stand on the pile without getting stabbed in the feet. Exactly. What I would do is I would get the I would get the blanket, I would get the big blanket, the thick one right here. I would like fold it up into a, like a thick square, like about that thick, and then I would sit it down into the pit, and then I would have the kid go down in there with his vans and like kick around and like like. Uh, like shush around the like uh, swish around in the needles a bit and look for it that way i mean that's like that to me is like the best option and then you have the other blankets here you're like okay so it, it's not in that specific area so here here's another blanket over here you can like jump over and step on that or like walk over to it because your shoes are going to block the needles from going in but i don't know and i'm not sure what kind of shoes that uh that Xavier's wearing uh let's see I don't know if we ever see his feet but I would assume he's wearing like thicker shoes but I don't know but so that fewer needles would puncture her they can also give her shoes for her hands that way her arms would have been protected and she can shovel through the needles much quicker after they fail the trap Xavier tells them no more talking <coughs> The only thing you people haven't come is holding me back. Oh really, Xavier? That's interesting because you haven't done anything yet. But anyways, <laughs> back with the. Also, his bat. Like, I, or I'm not sure if he still has his bat. Oh, here. he has shoes on too. Yeah, yeah, dude. Here's got shoes on. But yeah, the bat would have been a good tool for knocking the needles around and yeah. try to uncover the key. Exactly. Like, like have him standing here on this side. And then, like, pushing the, like, like with the bat, like, pushing the needles, like, back, like, pushing them back that way, and, like, trying to find them in here. I mean, it's something. It's something that doesn't result in someone getting a bunch of fucking needles in their, in their arms and legs and feet. The police, they notice that they have to act fast. So Eric tries to anger John by ripping up all of his paperwork, but he doesn't care, saying that this won't save his son. Then he reveals that he knows that Eric consistently cuts corners and has repeatedly planted evidence to falsely arrest people. That's what all the people in the house have in common. They were unjustly put in prison by Eric. Except for Daniel, of course, that's his son. Now the group looks more tired than ever. As they're stumbling around the house, Addison finds another room that opened. In it, she sees a glass cage with a syringe. She puts her hand through the hole and tries to pick it up, but it's glued to the glass. After <coughs> pulling the body off and spilling the entire antidote over the box, she puts the other hand in, but that doesn't do anything. Then we see that the holes are made out of sharp blades, which fold inwards but not out. Meaning that as she tries to pull her hands out, the blades dig into her arm. This is easily, like, the dumbest, like, trap. Like, well, not the dumbest trap, but the dumbest person, like, getting caught in a trap like that. I know she's delirious from, like, the from like the nerve agent but right here i mean it's All very she easy had to, to do is walk into the room like i mean not put her hand left hand into the other part of the box she could have read herself but if she was in the room with anyone else they could have they could have pushed push the blades up so she could well, slip her hand but up. that's the thing the blades you could like easily like push the blades to the side like this like have someone like do this and then you reach up you go in, you grab the antidote, there you go. Yeah. The, it's free. If but you also do... there's just the lock on the other side that you could open the top of the box with and try to tilt it and get it out that way. There's that too. Put your hands in, obviously don't pick up the syringe by the body, but from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Even if you start pulling by the body, by the time you're almost at the top, you might notice that this isn't working and you're about to spill the whole thing and make a big mess. Yep. So put one hand in and yank the syringe off by its bottom or break it off. However, you still need to get out of the box, since the goal is to survive for three hours and then leave the house, which you can't do if you're stuck there. If you put only one hand in so far, you can take your other hand and slide it in the same hole. Yep. Then you can lift up the blades with your fingers and take your arm with a syringe out of the box, but your hands need to be small enough. But if you have both arms in like Addison, there's a slightly different way out. Instead of trying to force your arms out like this girl, you can lift up the blades by the other arm. The way these blades work is with this folding mechanism. If you lift one blade, the rest are pushed open as well. So take your arm, carefully reach over to the other one, and lift up one blade. 
This way they all open up and you can take your hand out. But the easiest way to beat this is revealed in the behind the scenes of the movie. What audience members might see, the ones who are really paying attention, is that just at the top of the frame, you see there's a little lock hanging down and there's a key. And if she had have just walked a few more steps in the room, she would have found the key which opened the top of the box. She could have reached in there and pulled this antidote out. So walk around the box, grab the key and unlock it. But what Addison does is push there's her arms. There's even a chair yep. right there to stand on to be able to reach it. Mm -hmm. Further and tries to pull them out but I'll contribute her bad decisions to the effects of the toxic gas. Mm -hmm. Back with the cops, Eric starts beating up John until he decides to help. <coughs> Eventually, he says he will take care of the house. He and John escape the lair and drive towards it. The police quickly find out Actually, where they're wait, going. I think the nerve agent is proven to work because I believe at the very end, Amanda does inject herself and the kid with it. So, the nerve agent antidote. So Maybe. I just remembered that and follow them. Eric arrives at the house and tries to find his son, but when the SWAT team enters and goes into one of the rooms, they see that what they watched on the computers was a recording. It's not live. Everything they saw with Daniel, Jonas, and the others already happened, but Eric doesn't know that. So when he finally reaches the room where he thinks <coughs> Daniel is, it's completely empty. There he gets surprised by someone in a pig mask. Meanwhile, a safe opens back in the warehouse by John's desk. In it, the police find Daniel still alive. A few hours later, Eric wakes up again. He finds a tape where Amanda speaks. Da -da she reminds him that he, da -da -dum, da -da 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 -dum. he was the one who falsely sent her to jail. She reveals that she's become some sort of disciple of John and has been working with him. We find out that she helped make this trap and was in on it the entire time. And a fast cut of the... Yeah, I was gonna say... She did all that, but Amanda, let me ask you. you. I bet you didn't expect to get your ass tossed into the needle pit, did you? Nope. Movies events were reminded that Daniel would have gotten his son back if he would have simply stayed in the warehouse and talked to John. The rules are simple. What you have to do is sit here and talk to me. What? If you can do that long enough, you will find your son in a safe and secure state. If in a safe and secure state. Mm -hmm. Damn. Eventually, the safe would open and he would get Daniel. However, John apparently knew that Eric would be so impatient, and now he's left to die in the dungeon. This leaves Amanda to carry on John's twisted torture games after his death. In the last shot, we see John in the car, seemingly dead from his injuries after getting beaten up by Eric. But here's how the group could have escaped the house in a very short amount of time. <coughs> after the group makes their way out of the first room, Xavier finds the bat. Jonas asks what his plans are, and he says, Get it? It's wood. Plaster. It's not a fortress, it's a fucking house. This means that this is an old, cheap house that is made out of wood. And I'm no construction expert, but the way this house is probably built, they can beat a big hole in one of the outside walls. That way they could either escape through the hole or- Yeah, that's true. Cause that's the thing. Kind of what I was thinking too, I was like the entire thing couldn't be reinforced like the front door was, you would think. Yeah, and if it is, then damn, that is gonna be one like, like fucking armored house. So, for me, I, I mean, Xavier had a point there. Like, if you were to beat through any of the walls upstairs, you would probably run into a little bit of wiring, you'd probably run into some insulation, you'd probably run into, uh, you know, maybe a pipe or two, you know, for like plumbing or something like that. But eventually, you would hit that outside wall where, you know, the, where like the exterior, like the exterior cover is, Bust through that, boom, you're out of the house. I mean... Or even possibly, like, you know, they could have beaten through the wall into, like, the room with the needle pit rather than opening the door. Yeah. Like, stuff like that. Like, they could have subverted some of the traps, triggering and things like that. Oh, yeah. Or if that doesn't work, it would still ventilate the house. After three hours, the doors unlock and they can leave. Or they could break the interior walls and get a few of the antidotes by going into the rooms while they are still locked. Anyways, those are my mm -hmm. methods for beating all of the traps in Saw 2. I did skip the electrified staircase in John's lair, but that wasn't really a trap, and I'm pretty sure no one actually died from it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye. Damn. All right. I had a lot of the same thoughts I did in places. Some better than mine. Like, honestly, his idea about the cinder block, I think, is a lot or the bars is a lot better than my idea of breaking your own arms to save yourself from that one, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean the the you know, the pipes or the um, you know, or the um, 
uh, like you were talking about with the um, like cinder block and everything, that is most definitely something that could you know that could very much very much save you. You would probably have like some of the nails like going in, like puncturing your skin a little bit. And as long as you were careful and didn't like break the cinder block, because cinder blocks are tough, but they're not indestructible. Yeah. So you would have to be careful. So basically, I would sit there with the cinder block on top of my head, and then as soon as it came back, kink, and then it, it got caught, then I would just sit there. I would just sit there and wait. And I would wait. Somebody showed up before I started. Exactly. Or, or died, died of thirst. thirst. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. That was a hit starts how to beat every saw trap in Saw Two, so damn, that was a that was that was pretty good. I'm I mean there were some good solutions. There was some stuff that I didn't think about, and there was stuff that I had thought about. So honestly, yeah, this this one was a good one, and I can't wait to see. Uh, like I know that people are gonna ask us to watch more of these, so I guess we'll see how that goes. But for right now. Um, I think we're going to end this one here. This was, uh, once again, uh, more from Hit Start. If you want to see more from Hit Start, feel free to click their name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.